So this video is for S1 um, and we're looking at some of the numeracy skills that are going to help you in chemistry for your homeworks and also for the test that you'll have to set once we've completed all of chemistry. So the three numeracy skills that we're going to look at are how to do averages, how to do percentages and how to draw a pie chart. Okay, so the first one of those is averages. And you need to be able to calculate an average. So we're going to show you the method and we're going to talk through four different examples. So the equation we're going to use to calculate an average of different numbers is this. And that the average is equal to the total of all the numbers you're given. And the total means we add them all together. That line means to divide. So you're going to work out the total of all your numbers and you're going to divide that number by the number of numbers you have. Now that might seem very complicated when I talk through it in words, but whenever you see the examples it will hopefully start making sense. So we'll look at our first example now. So our first example is what is the average of 3, 5 and 10? So the average is the total of our numbers divided by the number of numbers we have. So in this, the total means add all the numbers together. So that is going to be 3 plus 5 plus 10. And if we count, the number of numbers we have is 1, 2, 3. We've got three different numbers. So our average is going to be 3 plus 5 plus 10. Work that out and then divide that by three. So we end up with 18 is our total. Then once we've worked that out, we divide that by three because we had three numbers and that gives us six. So our average is six. In our second example, we've just got a bit larger numbers. Now remember, in science, you're always allowed to use a calculator. So you don't have to struggle and try and do all this um, maths in your head or on paper. You can use a calculator. Now this time we have the average of 17, 18, 24, 38 and 43. So average, the total of our numbers divided by the number of numbers we have. Now this time the total we're going to have to add 17 plus 18 plus 24 plus 38 plus 43 and I'm going to use a calculator to do that and our number of numbers well we have five different numbers so our number of numbers is five when we add all those numbers together using a calculator it comes out to be 140 and that line remember means divide so it's 140 divided by five which gives us 28. Now, the previous two examples we had, our average worked out to be a nice whole number. Sometimes that is not what we end up with. So this example, we're going to end up with a number where we're going to have to use decimals. So in this case, what is the average of 6, 8 and 9? Our average again is the total of our numbers divided by the number of numbers. So in this case, our total is going to be 6 plus 8 plus 9. And we have three numbers, so we're going to be dividing by 3. So 6 plus 8 plus 9 divided by 3. So that is 23 divided by 3. And when we put that into a calculator, what we get is 7.66666. And the 6 is keep going. So what we do is we're going to round that up. And in chemistry, if we don't get a nice round number, we want it to one decimal place. So in this 7.666, and we round that up to one decimal place, that's going to be 7.7. .7. Now the reason for that is because we look at the number after the decimal place, which is a 6. 
and we look at the second number after it. So it's a six and then a six. Because six is bigger than five, we round up, which means we turn the number six right after the decimal place into a seven. If the number after the number you're going to round is four or less, you don't round the number up and you keep it as it was. So in this case, we need to round up because it's six followed by a six, so we round up. Now our next example is a common type of uh, thing where you're gonna have to read information in a table and take that information and turn it into um, usable information for calculating an average. So use this table to calculate the average mass of sugar in these cereals. Okay, so remember our average is our total divided by our number of numbers. In this case, our total is going to be all of the masses of sugars. So that's going to be 21 plus 24 plus 26, which is 71. Okay, so our total number, 21 plus 24 plus 26, which is 71. Now at this time, our number of numbers is how many different cereals did we have? And we had cereal A, cereal B, and cereal C, so that's three different cereals. So that's 71 divided by three. When we put that in a calculator, we get another time where we don't end up with a nice round number. We get 23.666, and we want to do it to one decimal place. So in this case, because it's a six followed by a six, we round that up to 23.7. So that has been averages. What we're gonna go on to now is percentages. So percentages is another type of calculation that we would like you to be able to do in S1 for all the sciences and in particular for chemistry. Now how to calculate a percentage, we use a different equation. This time, the equation we're going to use to calculate the percentage is the percentage is the number of things that you are being asked about divided by the total number of things you have. And once you've done the number divided by the total, you're gonna to multiply that by 100. And that multiplying by 100 is what makes something a percentage. Okay, now that might seem complicated, but we'll go through a few different examples. So the most uh, um, simple form of percentage is if you're told a score in a test. So a pupil scored 16 out of 20 in a test. What is that as a percentage? So percentage is the number of things divided by the total of things multiplied by 100. Now the number that the pupil scored was 16. The total possible mark was 20. So the number was 16 and the total was 20. So our percentage is 16 divided by 20 multiplied by 100. So we do that 16 divided by 20 first and then we multiply by 100 which is 0 0.8, 16 divided by 20 is 0 0.8, and then we multiply that by 100, which gives us 80%. And we need to put in that percent symbol to show that it's a percentage, okay? Moving on to a second example. In a second example, we've told that we've got a mixture of chemicals. And within that mixture, there were four elements and six compounds. And the question is, what percentage of the mixture was elements? Now remember, percentage is the number of things we were asked about divided by the total number of things. And then we multiply that by 100. So in our question, we were asked, what is the percentage of the mixture that was elements? 
So our number of things is our number of elements. And our total of things is the total number of chemicals. Okay? So our number of things is our number of elements and our total is the total number of chemicals we had. So we know, reading the question, we had four elements and the total number of things, total number of chemicals, was the four elements plus the six compounds. So there were 10 chemicals in total and four of them were elements. So our percentage is 4 divided by 10, and then we multiply that by 100. So that is 0 0.4 multiplied by 100, which gives us 40%. And again, we need to put in that percentage symbol. Now we're going to do one final example, and just like with averages, you're sometimes asked to work out a percentage using information in a table. So here we have a table, and it's showing us the mass of different elements in a mixture. And the question is, what percentage of the total mass was copper? Okay, so we've been told that in iron, we had nine grams of iron, 15 grams of zinc, and 23 gra grams of copper. What percentage was copper. So remember, percentage is our number of things that we're being asked about divided by our total number of things, and then we multiply it by 100. Now in this case, the number of things we have is our mass of copper. So our number is going to be 23. Our total is if we add the mass for each element together, that's going to give us our total. So 9 plus 15 plus 23. That gives us a total of 47. Remember, it was our mass of copper, so our number is going to be the number for copper, which is 23. So our percentage is 23 divided by 47 multiplied by 100. Now, when we do that, we end up with 0 0.489 multiplied by 100, which gives us 48.9%. So again, sometimes percentages are not whole numbers. Sometimes we need to use decimals. Now we're going to move on to our final skill, and that is how to draw a pie chart. So pie charts are uh, used to show information as fractions and then we divide a circle into those fractions. So in this example we've been told that uh, the favourite colour of 24 pupils was recorded in a table. So 24 pupils were asked um, what their favourite colour was and the results are in this table and we've been asked to turn that information into a pie chart. So 12 of the 24 pupils said that green was their favourite colour, 6 said that pink was their favourite colour, 3 said blue and 3 said orange. Now our first step is to know the fraction of each um, colour um, for, uh, so the fraction of pupils for each colour. So we're going to turn those numbers into a fraction. Now, if we're turning a fraction, and we know in this question, we were told that there were 24 pupils. So whenever we're doing fractions, we're going to take the number from the table and put that on top and 24 underneath. So for green, our fraction is 12 out of 24. But we can make that more simple. We can simplify that down. 12 out of 24 is the same as a half. Okay? Now with our pink one, that is 6 out of 24 pupils. Now that one can also be simplified because we can divide the top and the bottom by 6, which gives us 1 
over four or a quarter. And then for blue, it's three out of 24, which again, we can simplify because we can divide the top and the bottom by three to give us one eighth. And orange is also three, so that's three out of 24, which we can simplify by dividing the top and the bottom by three to give us one eighth. So we've worked out our fractions for each colour. Half of the class picked green as their favourite colour, a quarter of the class picked pink as their favourite colour, one eighth of the class picked blue as their favourite colour, and one eighth of the class picked orange as their favourite colour. So our next thing to do is we need to take a circle and show these fractions on the circle. So that's what we did first, we worked out our fractions, and now we need to divide a circle into those fractions. So we start with a blank circle, and then what we're looking at, well, green, half of the class choose green. So we're gonna divide that circle in half, and we're gonna label it green. Next, we're going to look at pink. Now, pink, it was a quarter of the class said that pink was their favourite colour. So we're going to show one quarter of that circle is going to be pink. And we need to label it pink. And then finally, we've got blue and orange, and they are one eighth each. And we show one eighth blue, one eighth orange. And that's us completed our pie chart. When there's no longer any space left in the pie chart that we don't have labelled, that means we've completed it. So that was a guide at how to do averages, how to do percentages, and how to construct a pie chart. Hopefully, Practicing those skills is really going to help you for your homework and for your coming test in uh, the end of each science unit. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.